a quote by the beloved book and now movie Horton Hears a Who that states, quote, a person is a person no matter how small. Though many of us love this story, have you ever thought about that quote? The whole story is based upon it. A person is a person no matter how small. In our day and age, we acknowledge that a one-month-old is just as much a person as a 55-year-old. Though size is different, they are both humans. And though some may see eye to eye about as much as a pastor and an atheist do, they are both humans. The legal definition of murder is, quote, killing with no legal excuse or authority, unquote. We all realize taking life is wrong, but to what point? Now, this seems like a silly question. However, it's a very undervalued question. In America, out of every 10 women, four will have an abortion. But abortion for most women is not murder. They're not taking life, merely unwanted tissue. Allow me to ask a simple question. How do you know I'm alive? Well, I'm breathing, and I have a heartbeat, right? Those are the two most obvious ways to tell us something is alive. From conception, the entire genetic code is there. Within 12 days, there is a discernible heartbeat. Most women don't even find out they're pregnant until around five weeks. Within six weeks, brain waves are present, and at 12 to 13 weeks, the baby can suck its thumb and recoils from pain. Pastor R.C. Sproul said, quote, some call it sewage, but I have never seen sewage with brain waves or heartbeat. It is a human life, unquote. TFP Student Action states on our website that abortion is, quote, the slippery slope. Yesterday, it was contraception. Today, it's abortion and same-sex marriage. Will it be widespread euthanasia tomorrow? Then what? Once abortion is universally accepted, what logic will stop other forms of murder and brutality, unquote. We as a people are becoming so incredibly selfish. We can talk ourselves into murder if it's an inconvenience. Jeremiah 1.5 says, quote, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to nations, unquote. How? How can we in the early stages of life say it's not life when the one who made it and gave it says it is? Not only is it life, but he has a plan and a purpose for that life. Again, the legal definition of murder is, quote, killing with no legal excuse or authority. Do we have the right to take life because it's an inconvenience? Or is it okay to murder somebody just because their life depends on you for it. A mother's womb was once the safest place to be. Now, it's the most dangerous. And at a time when a child's life should be protected the most, it's aborted. Pro-choice people say it's a woman's choice and that you're free to choose. However, 36-year-old Gianna Jensen, at seven and a half months, was aborted, or supposed to be. However, she survived. She says, quote, if abortion is merely about a woman's rights, where were mine? There was no feminist in the room yelling about my rights. In fact, there was only a woman killing my rights, unquote. Here's another question. Do they have rights? Why wouldn't they? Does a person who has death have rights? Would we really justify killing them just because they didn't say otherwise? Also, many say it's a religious belief and that you're free to choose. Well, what about spousal abuse? That's not even murder, and yet we do not leave that up to your personal belief. 1.5 million American families want to adopt a child. There's no such thing as an unwanted child. Only in the case of abortion do we use nonsense for an argument. Proverbs 31.8 says, quote, Open your mouth for the speechless in the cause of all who are appointed to die. Unquote. It says, open your mouth. Not vote against it. If it still goes through, raise your shoulders and say, oh well, I did what I could. 
It says to open your mouth for the speechless, not do whatever you want, God will be happy. It says to open your mouth for those appointed to die. Since 1973, more than 50 million women have made appointments for abortion. Appointments for death. Death to those who have rights but cannot speak of them. In southern Texas, a late-term abortionist, Dr. Curtis Stone, states, quote, Am I killing? Yes, I am. I know that. A day is coming when we will stand before God and give an account for everything we have done or not done. In that moment, you will realize that there is no one to point out. Shifting the blame won't be an option. Saying that you were too busy to change somebody's heart won't make Jesus smile. Um, what will your answer be when God says, I heard millions of cries, babies, being torn apart, sucked out, or burned alive in their mother's womb. Tell me, why did you turn your back? Are you doing everything you can to stand up for someone's life, or to help those who have had an abortion and now suffer the consequences? I'm asking you to care, to care about those around you, to not look down and keep walking, but to see murder, pain, and abuse and act upon it. Remember, a person is a person no matter how small. Thank you.